Hi guys, welcome back to Compound and Everything. My name is Chris and this is the channel that is dedicated to discussing all things investing, finance and business. Hopefully helping you build and grow a long-term successful portfolio. In this video, we're going to be discussing two dividend stocks that I think you might be interested in. Alongside that, we'll also cover some of the pros and cons of investing in dividends in times like these. Now, of course, if you haven't already, feel free to click that subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it so you can stay up to date on all of my latest videos. Anyway, in saying that, let's get this one started. So I will begin with saying if you are an Aussie investor watching this video, you are in a very lucky position. We have some of, if not the highest dividend distributions in the world. Now of course, if you don't happen to be an Aussie watching this video, you might not be as lucky. In saying that, even non-Australian citizens can invest locally here in Australia. So this video will definitely still hold some value for you as well. I always do have a bit of a laugh to myself when I hear US investors talking about 2% dividends like it's Christmas Day. I'm thinking, come on guys, us Aussies don't even get out of bed for under 3 or 4%. But all joking aside, how do we actually stack up against other countries around the world? Well, generally speaking, Australia, the UK, Spain, and Russia make up the top four positions when it comes to average distributions worldwide and have done for a little while now with China, Japan, and the United States often coming in way down the bottom of the list. So why exactly is that the case? Well, let's use the USA as an example. They prefer capital gains to dividends. Now, this is definitely a topic we could talk about for hours, but one of the reasons for that would be that there is no incentive via taxation sort of benefits for US companies to pay dividends. They don't have franking credits. As a result, they tend to buy back their own shares instead of distributing a dividend to their shareholders. The same practice is very common in other countries around the world that are also lacking a franking system. Now, without going into too much detail here on franking credits, in Australia, dividends are paid out of profits which have already been subject to the Australian company tax rate, which is currently 30%. This means that shareholders receive a rebate for the tax paid by the company on profits distributed as dividends. You are entitled to receive a credit for any tax the company has paid. And if your tax rate is less than the company tax rate of 30%, the ATO will refund you the difference. This really brings me to my first point. As an Aussie investor, it can be very difficult to escape dividends or distributions if investing in very safe, long-term securities like blue chip stocks or most major index funds. And you might be thinking, well, why would I want to avoid dividends? And I guess the very much oversimplified answer to that might be that at a young age, increasing your taxable income might actually do your returns more harm than good. Now, of course, this isn't always the case, but your age and income definitely play a role in the type of investments you should be making. Now, somebody in their 30s or 40s who is already on a full-time wage that may have a slight larger portfolio could in fact be left paying considerably more each year to the tax man. Now that doesn't mean I think you should steer clear of dividend investing altogether. I just think that doing your research first and understanding the ins and outs especially when it comes to franking credits and taxable income is very important. Now, before I go on here, if you are interested in a video breaking down franking credits, feel free to leave a comment below. And if enough of you are interested, then I'll consider putting one together, perhaps even bringing in an accountant to provide an expert opinion. So having said that, before we go on to my top two dividend stocks, keep in mind that at this point mid pandemic, we are certainly experiencing a large number of dividend suspensions or cancellations. So remember, just because a dividend is paying 5% today, doesn't mean it will be paying 5% tomorrow or in six months. They can and probably will fluctuate in times like these significantly. So to kick things off, we're gonna start with a security that was actually included in a previous video of mine, which is National Storage REIT. For those of you that didn't watch the video, I will put a, a link in the comment section below. Feel free to go and check it out after this video. This security just keeps on appearing in my watch list and in my scans over and over again. 
which for me, generally speaking, has been a sign of good things over the past decade. It's probably actually only happened three or four times in the past where I've had a security like this that just keeps on popping up in front of me. So I guess you're asking what stands out about this one? Well, it's you absolutely destroying that like button. In my last video, over 800 of you went down there and pressed that little fella until he turned blue, which I really do appreciate. It helps me taming the beast that is the YouTube algorithm. So let's try and do that again in this video. Anyway, that's right, national storage. Like I said, I've put together a video where I go into a bit more detail about this company. However, for those of you that haven't heard of them, National Storage own approximately 125 self-storage centers covering Australia and New Zealand. Within those centers, National Storage manages roughly 50,000 clients with 77,000 individual storage units. They also have an incredible history of providing a solid return on equity, along with a positive earnings per share and year on year revenue growth. Currently, they're still sitting around book value and under net tangible asset value. So the fundamentals are definitely there. And like I said in my past video, the product itself has almost no exposure to the current pandemic. And any existing clients that happen to default on their payments would most likely be very quickly replaced with new clients. Currently, National Storage are paying a dividend of 5.4%. Now, one of the benefits to this is not only that they have the solid fundamentals I mentioned above, it's that they are very unlikely to have to change this in any significant way. You're seeing companies currently cut dividends down by 20, 30, and 50%. Even some of the very large companies on the ASX have removed their dividends altogether. However, that is because they are directly affected by different macro and microeconomic effects that are currently happening in the marketplace at the moment. National storage is not really, for the most part, affected by them in any significant way. Of course, they would probably be feeling some of the impacts of the pandemic at the moment, but it's not something that is really smacking them all over the place. Following on from that, at this point, they haven't announced any short-term cuts to dividends. However, keep in mind, as a dividend investor, you would want to know that they do not take advantage of the franking credit system here in Australia, meaning that there is a 0% franking credit applied to that distribution, which is certainly something to consider on your end. And look, this is all just my opinion, but like I said above, National Storage appear to be a very solid company. In my eyes, I see them as somewhat of a combination between slight capital gains, very good income, and a solid business model with a great management team. Having mentioned these guys a couple of times now in my videos, I'd love to hear what you actually think about them. If you'd like to reach out to me, I'm going to put my details up on the screen here somewhere as to how you can get in touch with me. Feel free to send me a message or comment below and, and give me your opinion on national storage because I'm definitely more than happy to hear hear everybody's opinion on what they see happening with this company over the next few years or more. Now I kind of gave this away above, but this leads us to the next one, which is Vanguard Australian Shares High Yield ETF. This ETF provides low cost exposure to companies listed on the ASX that are paying a dividend. Essentially, the goal of this fund is to provide you with an above average quarterly dividend distribution. Now look, at this point in time, I'm not personally a dividend investor. Like I said above, if I happen to come across a security that pays income, it's not going to cause me to, to, to sort of walk away from it just like that. It's definitely something that is still on the table for me, especially if franking credits are involved. However, if I were a dividend investor at this point, I think what I would love about this fund is that it takes all of the groundwork out of finding reliable income. For a lean management cost of 0.35%, in times like these when you have companies cutting and suspending distributions, it could very well become a full-time job figuring out what to do next with your dividend investment portfolio. I guess a good example of that is this video. I spent roughly eight hours researching dividend stocks on the ASX that I felt fit into this channel's sort of safety net when it comes to long-term investments. Each time I found something that looked attractive on the surface, I would move on to their most recent announcements, which repeatedly stated dividends being placed on hold, reduced, or just cut indefinitely. Right now, my opinion is that this space is looking very speculative, and I think that you really have to be careful when making a decision on dividend investing with most securities listed on the ASX at the moment. 
I mean, traditionally, the big four banks are very attractive in times like these, with CBA now paying 7% income and the other three running very close behind. But they are also lowering dividend payments in the future, which adds more uncertainty. And that's without trying to dive into whether they are still fundamentally the investments they were years ago. Then I guess you can move on to some of the more traditional sort of dividend players like Harvey Norman, who has previously provided fantastic income of over 5% fully franked for many years. However, even Jerry himself has decided to cut the dividends short term. But of course, that really doesn't change your position as a dividend investor. If you're relying on income right now by dividends, you need to adapt. And currently, it looks like index funds might be the easiest way to produce some form of income while this storm blows over without maximizing your risk. Now, of course, like always, if you have a higher risk tolerance, you certainly can take some big punts right now on low cost income producing dividends. But that depends on your personal situation. I'm never going to encourage new investors to throw a Hail Mary. It's just not the smart way to go about things when trying to build a long term portfolio. For me right now, I'm more interested in trying to find great value that hopefully reflects in long-term capital growth. In saying that, if I can combine the two, which although rare is not impossible, I'll be a very happy man. So if you happen to find the unicorn, which we would class as capital gains paired with a solid fully frank dividend that hasn't been suspended, then feel free to share it in the comment section below and we can all look into it. Before I end this video, thank you to everybody who has subscribed to this channel so far. In the last six or so weeks, we've reached 3,000 subscribers and are a few days away from meeting the YouTube conditions for monetization. Like I said in my 1,000 subscriber video a couple of weeks ago, the goal is to hit 10,000 subs before the end of the year. And it's just incredible to see you guys getting behind this channel from such an early stage. So thank you so much. It really does mean the world. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to press the subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it. And of course, it would mean the world to me if you absolutely smash that like button. Seriously, it really helps me out in continuing to grow the channel. Thanks again, guys, for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.